Grace, are you home today? Hello, Olivia. Yes, I was just about to cook dinner. Oh, then great. What is it? I'm thinking of going over there today. What? You have a plan with my husband? I'm not allowed to go if I don't have a plan? No, I... No, it's not that. I didn't make any plans, but I just wanted to see my brother. Huh? I've been taking care of him ever since he was little. He's a fine adult now, but he used to be so shy. I had to give him a lot of help. Well, that's one of the cutest things about him, though. Oh, and? And? Of course I'm going to enjoy chatting with him. What's wrong with a sister going to see her brother? No, nothing's wrong. Right? And, by the way, I want you to cook my dinner too. Huh? You're gonna have dinner too? What's with that tone? You think it's too much trouble? No, I wouldn't think that. It's already evening, so of course I'm going to eat. I mean, isn't it a wife's duty to ask if I would like to eat together? I guess so. You really are so inconsiderate. My brother will have a hard time with a wife like you. Anyway, I'm heading over there now. Make sure my dinner is ready. Okay. Of course, there will be dessert after dinner, right? I must have dessert. No, there's no dessert. I don't think I'll have time to go shopping. I'll focus on cooking delicious food instead of it. Huh? Are you trying to go against me? What's with the delicious food? You're a terrible cook. You don't have to say such horrible things. Then, do as you're told, understood? Yes, ma'am. Are you almost done? It's gonna take a little longer. Why? I just got a call from your sister, saying she's coming over. Olivia? Oh, that's great. It's been a while. I'm looking forward to it. It's been a while? We just met her at your parents' house a week ago. How much do you love her? What? You're jealous of her? What a jerk. It's not like that. And she told me to cook dinner for her. She's gonna eat dinner too? Awesome. Treat her as much as you can, okay? She's coming all the way to our house. I was told to prepare dessert after dinner. Oh right, she loves sweets. If that's what she wants, then do so. Hey, can you go buy some on your way home from work? What? Why me? I have to start cooking dinner now. I don't have time to go buy sweets. Isn't it because you're not efficient? You stay at home and live comfortably on my income, so... You should at least do something about it. Living comfortably. It's not like I'm not chilling at home, I'm working. Your income doesn't even reach the amount of allowance. And you're being so arrogant only by having that job? Anyway, my sister said she'd come over, so... Do something about it. Wait, I didn't ask her to come. Huh? If you say something terrible to her, I won't forgive you. Okay, okay, I understand. I'm wasting my time. I'll do something for your sister's sake. If you understand, don't ask me from the beginning. Grace, can I talk to you now? Good morning, Olivia. Thanks for dinner yesterday. You're welcome. But I would prefer to have a better food. What? You didn't like it? It's not like... It's just that the food was kind of cheap, you know? Even though I'm your sister-in-law, I'm still a guest. I wish you would have used at least one of the high-grade foods. High-grade food? My husband's income is not enough to buy such a luxury food. Wow, surprising! You blame my brother for your bad cooking? I didn't say that. You're saying that his income isn't good enough to buy luxury foods, right? 
Well, that's true. I'm trying to cook with what we have. I feel sorry for him. Blaming your poor cooking on his income. I told you that's not what I mean. Fine, Olivia, if you don't have anything from me, I need to go. It's not like I have much time now. You're just being lazy at home. How cocky. Did I leave any papers there yesterday? Oh, the brown envelope? Yes, I knew I left it. That document, it's for a meeting. It must be very important. I will keep it here. I need it for the meeting this afternoon. So can you bring it to the office right away? What? Now? Of course! I told you I'd use it this afternoon! You really are clumsy. Do you even understand what people are saying? I have a remote meeting today. I'm afraid I don't have time to bring it to your office. Huh? I don't care about your remote meeting. You should come right now. Hey, you know, I'm working too. Work? Don't make me laugh. You're just being lazy at home. It's less than a part-time job anyway, right? That's not true. I don't care what you do, so just bring me the document. Don't tell me all of a sudden. You are my housekeeper, so all you have to do is follow my orders. I'm your housekeeper? That's right! Housekeepers are supposed to shut up and do as their employers say, right? I need you to bring the document to my office as soon as possible. If I don't get it in time, you take the responsibility. Got it? Can I talk to you for a second? What is it from the morning? I'm kind of busy getting ready for today. I'm even more busy. I got another text from your sister. What did she say? She wants me to bring her the meeting material she left at her house to the office right now. Oh, that? Why don't you just go bring it for her right now? If she's in trouble, then help her. You're not busy anyway, right? I'm working too, remember? I have a remote meeting in the morning. Can you talk to her about it? Huh? Comparing a job that doesn't even make any money and my sister's meeting? Which is more important? Of course, it's her meeting. What is that? I'm serious about my job too, you know? I can't do anything that would make my clients in trouble. Don't make me laugh. What's with the clients? Who are they? Your toy or something? A toy? I don't care about that. Shut up and bring her the document. What's wrong with you siblings? What? Your sister treated me like a housekeeper. She said a housekeeper should only do what she orders. That's not an option, is it? No option? You don't make enough money. You can't do the housework. You're an incompetent wife. You deserve to be called a housekeeper. I mean, you're no better than a housekeeper. How terrible. You never stand up for me, who is your wife. At least fulfill the duty as a housekeeper. Hey, aren't you my husband? Can't you be more considerate to your wife? It's not my fault. Are you misunderstanding something? It's obviously your fault. What? The food tastes bad. You try to make me go shopping on my way home from work. You don't listen to my sister's requests. You complain all the time. What part of this is not your fault? Don't be silly. You thought like that all this time? That's terrible. Of course. If you don't bring her the documents by the time, I'll reduce the amount of money I use for the household budget as punishment. Do you understand? Fine. Olivia, what on earth is going on? Oh, Grace, what is it without even saying hello? You're always rude. I heard that you told my husband to reduce the amount of money for living expenses he gives to me. What on earth are you up to? We can't live on this for a month. Oh, you don't understand. 
I thought you need to be penalized. Penalized? Why do I have to? Because, even though you're my housekeeper, you don't listen to me. And to top it all off, you complain a lot. Is that the reason? It's natural to complain. Because you are so unreasonable. Plus, I am not your housekeeper. Are you still saying that? You always surprise me. How can you talk so cheekily when you're so incompetent? You'll never make my brother happy. That's why I gave you a penalty. That's too much. How can we live on such a small amount of money? What do you mean, a small amount of money? How can you call the money my brother worked so hard to earn a small amount? That kind of person has to be punished. He agreed with me. What? He agreed? Of course, he wouldn't oppose me. Because you're an incompetent wife. Why did he marry someone like you? I feel sorry for him. You're going that far. You don't want us to live happily. No one said that. I want my brother to be happier than anyone else. That's why you need to be punished. Do you know how the sister feel when she is so thoughtful to her brother? I don't understand such things. I don't think we would understand each other no matter what. If you'll excuse me. Hey, how cocky are you? Hey, where are you? Oh, I'm at my sister's house. Why? You talked to her today, right? She's right. You're not fulfilling your duties as a wife at all. And your attitude towards her is cheeky. Therefore, I'm penalizing you. You guys are really crazy. What in the world have I done? First of all, we don't even have kids, and yet you don't work. You're spending your time being lazy at home, relying on my income. I work from home. How many times do I have to tell you? It's not even enough. You can't afford high-grade food, right? I don't think you have enough income. High-grade foods can't be afforded that often, you know? I'm trying my best to manage with the living expenses you give me. I've taken good care of those money. But if you lower that amount any further, it's going to be tough. It's your fault. Huh? It's because you're too incompetent. You should be punished once and reconsider your behavior. If you don't like it, then we are divorcing. Enough. I understand. I'll divorce you right now. What? Are you sure? How are you going to live without any money? I can see you being miserable every day. It's none of your business. You left the divorce documents on the table because you wanted to, right? I'm going to turn in the paper. Is that okay? Of course it's fine. I'm happy when my incompetent wife is gone. Fine. Grace, how are you? It's me. Can I talk to you now? Don't text me over friendly. You're a stranger now. Don't be so cold. We used to be a couple. Stop it. I want to forget it. I want to get back together with you. I want to take back the divorce. No, I don't want to. Can you stop texting me? Actually, after you left, I lost my electricity and water and all the utilities. I bet. And finally, the apartment manager told me to leave. I'm sure he would. The manager didn't do anything wrong. You were behind on your rent, weren't you? And the electricity and water stopped because you didn't pay, huh? How do you know? I have no idea what's going on. Of course you don't. You've never managed the household finances. You've only complained about it, though. What do you mean? You only gave me $300 for living expenses and didn't pay anything else, right? I don't understand your nerve to think you can live like that. $300 is enough for a couple to live, right? Well, I might be able to manage just for food. But to live day by day, food expense is not enough. There are so many other things to pay for. That much? Of course. Our apartment was under my name since I was living there before I got married, so... 
It was deducted from my account, but when we got divorced, I changed the account so that it would be deducted from yours. Why would you do that without permission? Isn't it obvious? We're divorced. Why would I pay? If you pay the rent, food, utilities, miscellaneous expenses, and insurance, I'm sure your small income won't cover all of it. I'm sure it couldn't be deducted. Then how have we been living? Are you an idiot? Huh? Of course, it's because I was paying. How the hell did you pay for it? There's no way you can pay if you're being lazy at home and not even going to work. Perhaps. Did you have a man pay for it? Don't be silly. I told you I was working. When you were sneaking around on your computer? I am working as a web designer, having business transactions with the clients. That's how I work. There was this teacher from the design firm I worked at before I got married, and she told me that I should continue to work from home because there are some clients who like my works. Is that so? I had a small number of clients at first, but one after another, clients introduced me to each other, and now I make money three times what you make. That's how we were able to make a living. You're kidding, right? Of course I was trying to save money and spend as little as possible. It wasn't easy with such a small living expenses. Then you and your sister treated me like a housekeeper without even listening to me. I'm sorry about that. I didn't know you made that much money. That's not the point. You siblings have a rapt way of thinking. No matter how much money she doesn't make, would you treat your wife or sister-in-law as a housekeeper? That's because she told me to do so. It's not my will. So we can start over as a husband and wife, right? Stop it, you sissy boy! Sissy boy? That's too much. I'm just being honest. Now I believe you too. Hey, let's start over again. You've got to be kidding me. I never want to see your face again. Why would you say that? You never know when you would betray me. Sissy boy should be taken care of by your lovely sister, not me. Don't say that and help me out. I'm about to be kicked out from the apartment, you know. You can't pay the rent, right? Then it's natural to be kicked out. Why don't you rent your own apartment or move into your sister's house? It's none of my business anymore, so do as you like. Please, Grace, you're the only one I have. Olivia has a boyfriend now, and lately she hasn't been talking to me at all. I can't move in with her. Then find your own place to live. If you're not a child, you can at least do that. Don't reach me anymore. You're going to abandon me? Don't you feel sorry for me? Not at all. I've been blamed so much until now, so it's rather refreshing. So don't contact me again. If you ever get close to me, I'll call the police. Remember that. Grace, you're lying, right? We've loved each other, remember? I can't talk to you. I'll block you right away. Well then, take care. The psychophantic man who was obeying his sister had no idea about our family budget. Except for the $300 he gave me for the living expenses, he spent almost all of his money on his sister. When I found out about it, I was stunned from the bottom of my heart. After Olivia got a boyfriend, Effie seemed to be spending all his money for himself without knowing why, and as a result, he had to adjust the debts. I was so stunned that I couldn't even say a word. I am so glad that I divorced such a man. After the divorce, I came back to the design firm where I used to work, instead of working from home. Working at the office is more exciting and I can get along with many people. Also, I can learn from teachers, so everything is good for me. Of course, I have enough income to live on my own, so I would like to enjoy single life in this style for a while. Bailey. You and I are getting a divorce. I'll send you the divorce paperwork, so make sure to hand that all in for me. Huh? What is all of this about, Matthew? Would you cut it out with this weird joke? This is no joke. I am being very serious about a divorce right now. I want you to please get this divorce with me right now. And I mean right now. Hold on a second, I have no idea what's going on here. The moment that your brother's funeral was over with, you said you had things back at your family's house and left me. 
And now it's been a whole day of me hearing nothing from you, and now you're finally going to say something and it's about a divorce? What the heck is going on here? Well, about my little brother Mark. I spoke with my mom and dad about him. Bailey, I'm going to get a divorce from you, and then I'm going to marry the much younger, now single wife of my dead brother. What? Your little brother's wife? You're telling me you're going to get married to his wife, Amy? Matthew, you're not helping me understand all of this any better, you know. Her husband only just passed away, right? This has to be some kind of a sick and twisted joke now, right? I told you this is no joke. Are you done freaking out now? Mark ended up dying in that car crash, right? And that means his wife, Amy, is now a single widow. And those two already had two little kids together, who are now without a father. She needs someone there to help her, right? Wait, I, yeah, I'm sure things will be tough for her from here on out. But Matthew... There's no way I can leave that single, heartbroken woman to take care of two kids and work a full-time job all alone. That's why I'm going to marry her and help support her young family. There also seems to be a lot of money coming in from my brother to her that he's left behind. I'm worried that a single young woman like herself wouldn't be able to defend herself from those that want to steal her money. Wouldn't it be best that I'm there to protect her? This is for Amy and her two kids. So, what do you think? Let's get this divorce over with. What do I think, Matthew? Is this something that Amy herself is agreeing with? Why would she ever want to marry you when you're already married to me? This is what my parents and I have decided on, alright? We haven't said anything to her yet, but... But there's no way a young woman like herself would say no to me. She happens to be in love with me already as we speak. <laughs> You're telling me that Amy, your brother's wife, has been in love with you? What the heck? This is the first time I'm hearing anything about this. You always have been a slow one. <laughs> if you'd just been looking at the way she acts when she's around me, then you'd understand how she thinks of me. <laughs> I know for a dang fact that she loves me with every ounce of her heart. <laughs> Wait, there is no way that's the case. How could she be into someone like you? Hey, hey, hey. You'd better stop getting so jealous, you old hag. <laughs> I'm sure you're jealous of the fact that she's not only young, but has two kids of her own already, right? <laughs> huh? You think I'm jealous of something like that? You have always been a pretty useless wife to me, considering the fact that you can never get pregnant. <laughs> I get that you're dying to be like her, but... Getting all jealous over her... It's not going to help you fix your god-awful issues. <laughs> this is making no sense right now. If you're going to start getting jealous over anything, then perhaps you should be jealous of all the women in the world that can actually make a baby. <laughs> well, anyways, I'm going to get married to Amy. She's young, she's beautiful, and there is not a single thing wrong with her. And when it comes to my little brother's money, it's all mine. <laughs> ah, so that's what this is about then. You're really just into her for the money. That's pretty disgusting of you, if I'm being honest. Say whatever you'd like about me, but at least I'm not the aging old hag with no children. <laughs> and let me just say that my mom is totally on board with all of this. After I get married to Amy, we are going to take her kids and move back home into my parents' house. I will be able to get those stacks of money, and Amy will get herself the protection and support she needs. And, as for my mom and dad, they will finally get the grandchildren they have been waiting so patiently for. This plan will leave all three parties satisfied, right? And my mom has told me there's no need for you and this family anymore. <laughs> she told me that if I'm bringing a young beauty back home with me, and her two kids, to throw you out. <laughs> Recently, both my parents have been in kind of a bad mood about things. So I'm sure once I bring them some grandchildren home, those two will go right back to being happy parents again. 
You really just love to go on and on about random crap that's wasting my time. What was that? Almost four minutes of you just talking there? Well, I'm glad to see that you and I being married meant absolutely nothing. And that this whole time you've probably been scheming with your parents to get rid of me for Amy. It's your fault for never doing your job as my wife and bear me any kids. <laughs> Just know that it's over between you and I. Sign those papers, and then get the hell out of my life. <laughs> Alright then. I'll give you that divorce if it's really what your whole family wants. I wouldn't want to continue being married to you anyway after hearing that mouthful. Just know that in this divorce, we'll be splitting half our properties between one another. And after that, I don't even want to bother with you anymore, so I'll refrain from making you pay me a settlement or anything. You go ahead and handle the lease on this apartment. I'll send the papers to your parents' house, and then you can hand them into the courthouse. As long as you give me this divorce, you can do whatever you want with it. Bye-bye, <laughs> you old hag. <laughs> Try better to not be thrown away by the next man you meet, okay? <laughs> So that's what I know from Matthew so far. Do you have any clue what's going on here, Amy? Wait, what are you talking about, Bailey? I had no idea any of that was going on behind my back. You're telling me I'm going to have to marry my brother-in-law? No freaking way I knew about that. Absolutely no freaking way. I'm still having to cope with the loss of my husband right now, and yet they're talking about something as crazy as that? And that Matthew's even gone as far as to ask for a divorce from you already? This can't be happening right now. What the actual hell is going on right now? That's what I'm wondering. I guess my idiotic husband is going on some kind of crazed money hunt. Bailey, I really don't want to say this to someone like you, but I have always hated Matthew and my mother-in-law. Many times before, when I'd go to their family gatherings and events, Matthew would always try and get close to me and touch me even. His mom and dad would also laugh about it and say some of the most disgusting things sometimes. Also, my mother-in-law would always harp on about me having kids with Mark. And then when I finally had my first kid, she acted like they didn't mean much to her anyway because she wanted Matthew and you to have kids. There were times where both you and Mark would be around to get her to lay off me. But even still, I can't stand being around that woman. Amy, you don't have to be worried about telling me you hate them. I freaking hate them all as well, and it's time something was done about it. All of them are screwed in the head, and we don't have to cater to any of that. By the way, after the funeral just ended, they all started to ask me how much money Mark left behind. They were asking me if it'd be tough living on my own with two kids and if I needed a new man in my life. All of it was kind of vague at the time, but it all still made me pretty upset and surprised to hear. What? Those assholes were asking you things like that at Mark's literal funeral? I am so sorry that we have to be related to them all. Related to those animals? No, 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 no. You don't have to apologize for any of that. You did nothing wrong. So please, don't feel sorry about it. I just hope you understand that I will not be getting married to Matthew, no matter what. I don't need a man in my life to make things work. And if I eventually do, then I'll choose someone far more deserving of being my husband than that pig. Thank you so much for confirming that for me. All right, Amy. Now, if any of those freaks start to come to you saying things, tell them you still need time to recover from your loss and buy me some time. By us, sometime. I'm going to work on ending things once and for all between us and them. So let's cut these ties as soon as possible. Sounds great. I'll make sure to keep them at bay. And thank you so much, Bailey. Bailey! Bailey! There's a major problem! Amy ran away! Huh? What's all of this about now, Matthew? Today, I went over to Amy's place to go see her. I thought she would have finally come down by now, and so I was going over to start talking about the marriage with her. But when I had gotten there, she had already moved out of the house. She took all that money from Mark and ran away from me. That witch! 
She also sent a message to the courthouse saying she was changing her name back to her family's name, along with her children, so that she isn't a part of our family anymore. I don't care how much you think she ran away from you. That money she got after Mark's passing was meant for her only. You should have no problem with her taking that money because it was never yours. And as for that paperwork she filled out, changing hers and her children's names back to her family name, that was her right. Mark is no longer around, and she has every right to change her last name, as well as her kids' last names, back to her parents' name. There are a lot of problems with all of this. Tons of them. The plan was for Amy to marry me next. But instead, she went and took all that money and her kids and ran away. Has there ever been as bad of a backstabbing as this in the history of man? That plan you're talking about was something only you and your parents talked about, right? I'm sure that Amy didn't want anything to do with it. Especially since her husband had just died and her brother-in-law was already talking about how he would marry her next. She knew just as well as myself that you only wanted to be with her for that money Mark would leave behind. Don't tell me that she hated the plan. Why would she have any reason to? She knows that by marrying me, everyone can be happy. I'll be able to take care of that money for her and her kids will be in my parents' hands. And the fact that she'd be able to move back into my parents' house with me after the marriage would be a massive help, right? That's only a massive help for the three of you. Amy doesn't need any of your guys' help. That money she's received will go right into her bank account and can never be touched by anyone but her. And she was always the one in charge of the money in that house anyway, so she knows what she's doing. She doesn't need some stranger coming into her life telling her what to do with it. And as for her kids, she can go back to her parents' house and have the both of them help support her. She would be much better off with her own two parents instead of your mother, as they wouldn't cause her loads of stress. That woman can live an amazing life without having to marry a man like you. No, that's not the only problem, though. Amy is in love with me. Back when we last met with one another at one of my family gatherings, she touched my arm a little. She looked so happy about it and laughed. Are you kidding me, Matthew? There is no way her laughing like that meant she loves you. Do you have any idea about how much she hates your guts? She already hated you plenty before you started to go up and try to touch her, so when you finally did graze your arm across her like that, she was probably in shock. I bet she was laughing about it because she didn't know how to respond to that level of disgust. And the only other reason for it was probably because you're her brother-in-law and she couldn't say anything about it. That would have only caused more problems for her, so it was better to just play it all off by faking a laugh or two. Did you ever even notice that once you started to get way too close and personal to Amy, Mark or I would step in between you and her? What? You guys were both doing that because you guys were jealous, right? Amy is younger and more beautiful than you after all. Shut the hell up, you idiot. Why would I be jealous of something like that? I was getting in the way because I felt bad that she had to be that close to an old geezer whose breath smelled as bad as a dead skunk. I was there for her protection only. Amy was telling me a few months ago that she never really liked you that much. But I know deep down she freaking hates you with every nerve she has. That's why when she heard about you wanting to marry her, she bolted. She's not going to marry some old man that doesn't care about her feelings, so just give it up, Matthew. I can't. Just give it up, though. I already bought a brand new car, thinking that once I married Amy, I would be able to get my hands on Mark's money. Huh? A brand new car? It was a car that I had been wanting for a long time now. A high-end sports car. I bought that thing thinking I'd be getting Mark's money. And that car will be coming to the house soon. And I'll have to start paying for it. If I can't marry Amy soon, then I'm going to be in huge trouble. Jesus Christ, you really are such a mess. I was already livid thinking about the fact that you divorced me wanting to marry your little brother's wife right after he died. But then you went ahead and bought a brand new car, thinking that you'd be able to get your hands on your brother's money, too? What the actual hell, Matthew? And a high-end sports car, of all things? That's not the kind of car a man that was just saying he'd marry her to help support her and her kids would be buying. Well, thank God that in the end, she got away from you before you could actually inflict any damage. But, but that car is my dream car. I have dreamed and dreamed and dreamed about being the owner of a car like that. I had to give up on it though, because with my income, I was never going to be able to get one. 
But then the chance came where I'd be able to get that kind of money. Of course I'd buy the car right off the bat, thinking that his money was mine. Unbelievable. What kind of shameless thing are you again? Don't start telling me you're a man because you sure as hell aren't. If by a one in a million chance, no, wait. If by a one in a billion chance you were able to marry Amy, there is no way she'd just let you use all that money from Mark on yourself. That money is meant to help her care for herself and her kids' futures. But if we got married, then it would become both the husband and wife's money, right? Would you shut the hell up, dude? You are talking so much crap right now that I wouldn't be surprised if you always took craps out of your mouth. Amy will never, ever marry a thing like you, and Mark's money is never going to be yours. That's the reality, you dumbass. Understood? Huh? Then what am I going to do about this car? I already had to give you half of my savings in the divorce, so I barely have anything left. I don't even have the money right now to get a loan or anything to help pay it off. You were the idiot that went and bought the thing, so pay for it, alright? The only other option is to try canceling that purchase before the car arrives. Honestly, I don't care what has to happen because we are divorced now and you are a nobody to me. Don't say something like that, Bailey. Hey, alright, I'll give up on trying to chase Amy. But that means I want you back. We don't even have to have any kids. Please come back and marry me one more time. Excuse me? You think that after all the crap you've said, after all the crap you've done, and after all those things you've made very obvious about your toxic behavior, that I'd ever want to go back to you? You just said you understood, but I think you've only gone farther away from understanding anything. No frickin' thanks. I don't think anyone should have to marry something like you, Matthew. Why would you say something like that? I'm in huge trouble right now. Please help me. I was stupid for wanting a divorce from you. I admit that. Please, Bailey, come back to me. You don't have to admit something that's very obvious. The fact that you don't even feel any form of shame for all of this is what makes you a monster. Thank God that divorce happened when it did. You have nothing to do with me anymore, so never talk to me again. Bye forever, asshole. After I finished talking to him, Matthew must have been super desperate because he continued to try and find Amy to get that money Mark left behind. At the same time as all of that, though, he was still sending me texts asking me to go back to him. I was trying my best to just ignore all the notifications that kept going off, but at one point, I just lost it. So in the end, I blocked his number, and ever since then, the only person I communicate with is Amy. I later learned that during that whole chase after Amy, Matthew never tried to cancel the purchase. And by the time he did realize it was hopeless and went to cancel the purchase, it was too late and the car was already there. He didn't even have the money to make the second payment on the car, so before he could even try riding it around, he had to return it. But even with the return, he still had a decent amount of money to pay for the shipping and construction of the car, so he was still in debt. As for Matthew's mom, she not only lost Amy, but both of the grandkids she had too. And on top of that, her husband started to realize that he wasn't as screwed up as his wife and son, and this led to him leaving the house. She was so shocked by all that had happened that she started to hide away in her house, which has led to her going a little crazy due to all the stress and lack of contact with anyone. I guess this is how things will end for two of the most disgusting people this planet has ever witnessed. After the divorce, I ended up moving closer to my place of work, and while I work and treat myself to the life of being happily single, I go over to see Amy and her kids while helping her around the house a little. At first, things looked a bit tough for Amy and the kids, as it really started to sink in that Mark was gone, and the rest of his family too. But after some time with me and her family, her and her kids made it past that sadness, and are living life like champions that survived the monsters in their arena. I'm sure that Mark, looking down from heaven at Amy and his kids, feels a whole lot better now as well. <laughs>